I'm up in my studio today because I wanted to tell you about something that's uh, a little bit laughable at the moment. Um, Bill Gates, we all know him, lovable Bill Gates, the guy who gave us the Windows computers, who has changed from being a tech person into becoming not only a, a guru for health and how we should uh, take vaccines left, right and centre, some of them not as good as maybe they were first imagined to be. He's also now a bit of a food growing expert, buying up all this land all over America and different parts of the world, as far as I understand. And um, he's what he's decided is not to have any animals on it or to grow anything on it. I think he's, he's going to have a million Petri dishes and start to grow artificial food which seems a little bit odd to me. But there's a report. Somebody sent this. It's in the public domain, so I think we're allowed to have a look at it. Have a look at this. This is from a, a website called News Punch, uh, where mainstream fears to tread, it says here. But the study it's reporting about says, Bill Gates's lab-grown meat causes cancer in humans. That's a, a little bit of a worry. Let's have a look. There we go. There's some uh, Petri dish full of... Um, homegrown meat by Mr Bill Gates looking somewhat nervous there about it and the study goes on to say that Bill Gates lab grown meat causes cancer in humans who consume it according to a disturbing new study now I can't verify that study of course here's a picture of it with a tweet that is purported to have come from him that says uh, cancers found in fake meat are totally harmless to humans, totally harmless, won't do any difficulty at all to them. Synthetic meat has been heavily promoted by Bill Gates, it says here, and the globalist elites at the WEF as the solution to so-called climate change. However, this same food has now been shown to cause cancer via the immortalised cell lines used to manufacture it. Um, it does go on a little bit here to, to say it's uh, from Natural News um, and it's uh, Raw Egg Nationalists shined a light on this issue in February the 17th piece um, for the National Pulse. They're citing a Bloomberg story about it. Um, and so it's a bit of a worry, isn't it? It's a bit of a worry if these homegrown Petri dish solutions to growing meat is now a bit cancerous uh, and that's going to be something that's foisted on us. Um, I'd never liked the idea of artificially creating food. There is a very natural way of growing food. It's been a natural way of growing food for, well, the beginning of time really, isn't it? Ever since this planet was formed and life started to sprout out of the ground or leap out of the seas, there's a very natural way that food does it. And as humans that we have over the years evolved into these incredible, wonderful, sentient creatures that we have with our wonderful, amazing fingers and these disposable thumbs. Sorry, um, not disposable thumbs, opposable thumbs. And the genius of life, of how we can manipulate our body and be so incredibly clever and make things with our hands as the Neolithics would do with the axes and then the, the Bronze Age people and the, uh, the Iron Age people, you know, all cleverly working out how metals work, how farming created and have established over these thousands of years of, of, of how to eat and how to have wonderful, good, wholesome, organic food. I mean, organic in itself is a stupid word. We've only had to use organic food since we started putting the nasty stuff onto food, the pesticides, the infecticides, the herbicides, all these sort of toxins that are there to try and get rid of everything else bar the food itself so that we end up then with a monoculture in which there is no wildlife all around the bees and the, the, the pollinators and the, the insects and things. And uh, farmers have been trained, groomed, if you like, to get rid of the hedgerows and, and just grow these mono, these horrific monocrops which have stripped the landscape of all nature and beauty in many cases. 
And, and so the organic term is now used to refer to natural foods that have been grown without all these horrible toxins grown on it. And, of course, it, it, the food has now been so industrialised over the years that I can understand why somebody like uh, the, the grinning face of uh, Bill Gates there with his uh, rather worrying vaccines... Um, it says here, vaccines in our food supply solves the problem of vaccine hesitancy. I don't know whether any of that is true either. He just seems to be a little bit sort of off them. I wish he'd just stuck to computing. I think he'd have been pretty OK if he'd just stuck to that. So food, food is so important, but it's been industrialised, hasn't it? It's been turned into this huge manufacturing process. And to me, it's like a race to the bottom in which... You're trying to make food as cheaply as you can, and which is why the sort of the idea of having insects will just grow millions of insects because they're ever so cheap and they, they don't fart, apparently, and so they don't create a methane gas, which we're told is dreadful for the uh, environment because it's part of the greenhouse gases, of which, of course, it's such a sort of minor part of the greenhouse gases. We've had far more cows farting and animals doing that and humans doing it i mean are we going to eradicate humans oh yeah i think there's a plan to do that too uh, mainly because we probably because we fart yes uh we're just these useless eaters food of course is essential to life and the manufactured food that we see in our supermarkets are so full of these um, toxins and things from not only the stuff they put on the food but the processing that goes into it and all the horrors that they shove into it that when you go to the supermarket now you don't really know what it is you're eating but you know it's probably not terribly wholesome it hasn't come from a local farm you can't go and look at the crop you don't know what the processing process itself is so it's all a bit of a worry but what can we do? We need wholesome food to keep our immune systems healthy in this toxin-ridden environment that, we, that we're in. Well, one solution I've had now is <clears throat> I've decided to go for veg boxes. I'm, I am moving away from the supermarkets. I just don't trust them anymore. Yes, the food is cheaper there. And yes, it's nice to be able to just nip in and see that amazing range that you get in the supermarket, which is not necessarily the biggest range that you think it is. It looks like it's a big range, but actually, you know, there's usually only one or two varieties of potatoes, for example, one variety of carrot, for example. Um, and, and so you haven't got the, all those apples that we used to have. You think of all those beautiful old names that we had, the, the crazy names that you would find if you go down to Somerset where they have all them lovely apples and things and they make ciders, there's still a few little places left that do that. They do. But uh, in the supermarkets, just it's bland and it's they're all made to look polished and waxed. But the nutrial, nutrient value of the food, the minerals and the vitamins that are supposed to be in the food that we crave as human beings that keep us alive and alert and keep our brains happy and safe and uh, ward off things like dementia and mental e problems and get rid of sort of cancers and things like that in in the in the body they they've been removed and enzymes and various nefarious things are in there and some uh, vitamins are put back but but not the wholesome whole thing that the original food it was designed for so i've decided to to boycott them from now on. I don't want to have anything to do with them as much as I can. Occasionally I might have to go and buy some bits and pieces. But where I can, I'm, I'm buying other things. So I'm dealing with um, one of the big chains of... Um, uh, one of the big companies of organic food that I've been following. I've been following Guy Watson on YouTube for a long time and I like his ethics of how they grow their food, how the company is run. Yes, it's big and they deliver all over the UK... Uh, but I do like the way they do it. Now, there are other ve veg boxes available um, and smaller ones from local farms. And, and, of course, I'm not paid by anybody to, to mention this particular firm. I just have been experimenting with them and it's been going very well. Um, so I bought this veg box. Now, of course, the real food costs more than the race to the bottom food. Uh, in the supermarket. And of course, it's going to, isn't it? It's going to because food actually costs to produce. 
And if you're going to eat the wholesome product, um, it's going to cost you more than if you do the race to, produ- to the bottom where it's hugely industrialized and all sorts of additives are shoved in to get something to be produced in bigger quantities. Now, my theory is that actually if more people actually were to eat organic food from genuine farms, the prices would actually drop because there would be a bigger demand. But because the demand at the moment isn't as big as the supermarket stuff, that the food has to be more expensive. But I, that's not to say that food would, from organic farms would ever drop because it is expensive to produce food. And this is full of... I'm just going to have to show you briefly what's in it, but, but um, you know, you can imagine what's in it. The, the, another way to think about it is the food in here. So, for example, like this is... Uh, this is your um, curly kale. I'm sure people recognise that. Curly kale, full of nutrients, full of goodness, very healthy, fibre as well to keep you going. Everybody needs a bit of fur. I think that's a chard. Uh, I've not really cooked with that, so but that looks lovely. And it's fresh and it's beautiful. Delivered to your door, which is superb. I've got... The veg boxes come in all sorts of different things, so don't necessarily go by these. These are all organic from different places. So I've got some blood red oranges here. These obviously are not grown in the UK, and I know I know that Riverford have vetted farms from different parts of the country so that they can supply, during the winter particularly, sort of good, you know, source of vitamin C and things like that. So, um, so they are grown organically, but not necessarily in this country. So, OK, there's a few extra miles in that. Uh, but they're healthy. If you buy them in a supermarket, you've, you've got the same issue anyway. Um, oh, wait a minute. Is that chard? I've, now, I'm, I, I, I'm going to show my ignorance here. This is where I'm not quite sure what that is. Or is that a... Um, hang on a minute. I know what that is. I can't think of the name. So you're all screaming at me, those people who know. See, I'm quite new to this. Um, so we've got one of those. We've got a load of apples in here. Onions. Um, organic onions, which, of course, is lovely. Carrots. That's... Uh, not a very good example, a little tid- tiddly carrot, that one, but they've got some proper, you know, proper real carrots that come out of the ground, organically grown um, and fresh. And I tell you, the food, I've had, I did a, one of these um, now for a while, and, and it's so different. The potatoes, these potatoes, here we go, a little bag of potatoes in here. I can't, can't get them out without opening it. Um, the, I think these are red potatoes. So these are the ones I had before. Oh, no, these are different. These are triple O potatoes. Grown uh, locally uh, to Riverford, I think. But again, hang on, I'll, I'll open it. I'll open it. Look at that. Real potatoes. Real potatoes. I'm looking forward to, to trying that. Um, what else? And I've got some grapes. A little pummet of grapes here. And uh, I can tell you... Oh, so sweet. So delicious. So lovely. So I get a mixed veg box, a bit of fruit, a bit of veg, but they do all sorts. They also do proper meat, organic meat. I'm going to try some of that. I'm also looking around at other sources for it. The thing to do is to think of food as a medicine. If you were feeling rough and you needed to take medicine, you would pay for it, wouldn't you? If you couldn't get it on the NHS in this country, if you found that you you had to go and pay for it, You'd pay for it because you thought it was going to do you some good. It's going to improve your life. It's going to make you feel better. That's what food does. If you eat properly, you don't need a lot of medicine. You're getting the nutrients. Your body heals itself. We need real food. We need proper food in us. People have got so used to processed rubbish where we haven't had the nutrients and the vitamins. And as a result of that, we get ill. But if we eat proper healthy food, you don't. So think of food as medicine. This stuff is providing the body with what it really needs. In this particular um, thing, I just wanted to share this with you. Every now and again, you get a free gift and you never know what it's going to be. And on this case, this is (laughs) this really surprised me. A beautiful book. Uh, Now, again, I'm not paid to do this advertising. I was just so enamoured. When I opened, when I looked at my uh, veg box and it arrived, and there was this free gift from Riverford as a companion. Obviously, it's a bit of a sales ploy. I get that. By Guy Watson, the guy who founded it, with a number of other uh, wonderful people who've uh, contributed to it. Autumn and winter veg, 
Uh, beautiful book, retail price sixteen ninety nine, with um, some lovely ideas on how to cook and uh, prepare and look after all the food uh, that you make. So I just wanted to share that, you know, proper like a good old cookbook. And you might say, I know the argument against all of this is I don't have time. Uh, I need something quick. I've got a family. I need it cheap. But ask yourself, if you've got children and they're growing up, and they've got brains, they've got muscles, they've got all these things that they need. Real food, you know, I think food has been put down uh, on the lower rungs. We take it for granted. We assume the supermarket will supply us with something that is is supposed to be healthy. And we'll buy the se- packet of cereal and add some milk to it and assume that because the glossy box says that it's full of all these good nutrients, that it is actually full of all these wonderful things. But I think we're being deceived there. There's so many people who are ill these days and that Big Pharma are relying on them being ill so that they can flog more of their awful pills, which have side effects. We all see the side effects, you know, huge amount of side effects. I I just think this is a wrong way round. Food should be at the top. The, the most important thing, food. Never mind your television, your subscriptions to Amazon or Netflix or the, even the television license. I don't, I don't have a television anymore. I don't watch the mainstream media. Food, the enjoyment of food, of, of looking at it, feeling it, smelling it, touching it, preparing it, cooking it, smelling it, and understanding the food, and then eating it. And it's, just, it's not once you've just scoffed it and it's gone. It's what it does to you to lift you, to make you feel better, to refresh your mind and keep you positive and happy. I know it sounds absolutely barking mad because we're so used to just going to uh, a, w- one of these fast food restaurants and having in a bit of a nasty bun that has no good quality to it some suspect looking piece of beef and a whole load of squirty sugary based crap that's supposed to be like a tomato but has very little tomato in it and anything is just essence and and we're eating it we've been conditioned it seems to me that with all this fast food, very easy to cook, uh, microwave ping food, that very soon we will find it far, far easier to step to something like this horror, this horror of, look at that, does that look nice and and wonderful to, uh, and look at it, it looks horrible. Um, Artificial food grown in a Petri dish. Is that what we really want? Is that what we've come to in life? I don't think so. I think that we can aspire to far, far better. Be interested in your comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you on another video coming up very soon.